was asked to give a little bit of overview of uh, what I'm going to, what I'm doing, and what the research actually encompasses. And I decided I'm not going to show any chemical structures or anything along those lines. <laughs> Some people may have heard um, recent presentations I gave, and so it might be a little repetition here. But um, so, so what I basically work on, you can summarize in these four words or five words up there. Uh, something to do with photosynthesis, greasing photosynthesis, and making fuels, okay? So we basically work on lipids, and lipids are molecules that um, are co components of membranes, and specifically the photosynthetic membrane. And, um, and then there's other lipids, that, uh, like vegetable oils, that uh, can be used for fuels. And so I have been heavily engaged in um, biofuel research with the GLBRC, and even before with interacting with companies and so on. And, and I want to start with this image right here, um, the first image, which is essentially, which is a, a beautiful tree, and probably will surprise you if I tell you that this tree grows in the um, tidal zone about 20 feet away from the uh, Pacific Ocean, um, in Galapagos actually, and this is a black mangrove tree, and so normally, not, there's no water, okay, so except salt water, and that's pretty unusual that these types of plants can actually grow there. And to me, that exemplifies an uh, well, example is an example for how plants cope with uh, unusual environments. And um, s some of these mechanisms involve lipids, um, and that's why I'm showing this this image here. So I'm not going to give you the whole thing of what I did or what we did. Um, as a whole group, um, I will show you the, everybody involved in the end in a, in a big uh, collage. And, um, but I want to just hit on some key points that uh, made this all possible. So, so one thing that I feel uh, kind of made my career and made it possible for me to actually come back to MSU was this, this thing right here. So, so that little plant right there, which is this plant right here. And and so that plant was um, a mutant of Aridopsis that, that's lacking one of those uh, galactolipids, uh, lipids that are very abundant in the biosphere. Um, they're made in the chloroplast, uh, they're part of the photosynthetic membrane. And if you don't, if the plant doesn't have this lipid, you end up with a really small little plant, as you can see right here. And, and what's uh, important about this is, this is an experiment that we did here, this mutant screening, that with some of my former thesis where they said was impossible to do. Okay. So as I said before, so it's very good to listen to your thesis advisor, but eventually you have to stop listening okay, <laughs> and do your own stuff and, and go beyond that. And so, so what all, what's also important about this uh, is um, that we did a map-based cloning on this, and, and that was before the genome sequence of Aridopsis was established, and that was a real slog and, and took uh, two brilliant people, Peter Dermann, um, and Ilse Balbo about three years to accomplish this. So we recently did similar thing in like a couple of months um, as an undergraduate experience between uh, Rob Last and myself, uh, and then did one similar thing in a very short period of time. So this is uh, the, the um, case that, uh, or the example that uh, Tom already mentioned. Um, so in this case, we didn't discover the actual gene. The gene was discovered by somebody else called SFR2, sensitive to freezing um, 2 in our redopsis. It was um, discovered by Gary Warren, who um, passed away at work, basically, um, died on, at his chair, basically. And, um, but he discovered this uh, mutant uh, in a series of them um, that were involved in uh, causing sensitivity to freezing in our redopsis. And they, they wrote a series of papers about it one of them in Plant Journal, and um, I happened to come across this as the editor-in-chief of Plant Journal and see that. And I couldn't make sense of their biochemistry, and um, basically then passed this on to, had an idea, um, passed it on to Eric Mellering, one of the grad students, and um, he basically then discovered that the enzyme that we, that we were looking for uh, was basically this enzyme uh, defective in this, in this plant. And the enzyme uh, is also involved in lipid metabolism, and it's involved in a way that it essentially modifies the uh, lipid composition of the photosynthetic membranes in the chloroplast in response to freezing. And that will allow these, and that basically brought together two old concepts. So you can see here an electric um, EM, 
uh, of damaged membranes uh, from a person named Stepankos, who uh, was very came up with this idea that uh, freezing damage is a function of chloroplast membranes, and so he showed these structures here, and essentially he provided a mechanism to explain how these structures were coming about and how um, remodeling of the, photo, of the photosynthetic membrane or the chloroplast envelope would actually allow the plants to become freezing tolerant and how and and there was interesting biochemistry involved. So we, we didn't discover the we didn't discover the gene, but we figured out the right biochemistry and we put it together with the physiology, and that made it a big story that uh, brought closure to a big topic, and um, and that was an, that was the importance of that uh, discovery. So um, another topic we've been working on, and I mentioned this before, on we work on biofuels, and I want to talk a little bit more about the future. So this is uh, the accumulation of uh, vegetable oil essentially in an algae. So here you can see these green drops, uh, stained uh, lipid droplets, um, specifically stained lipid drops, the red part is uh, the chloroplast. And these algae make these oils when they're stressed. So, so one of the grad students in the lab, Chiang Zai, basically uh, came up with the idea that, or this concept that this, what's happening here is really quiescence. Quiescence means these cells, when they're stressed, uh, when you take the nutrients away, they go into a resting state. Um, they're still active, but they stop dividing. And so and they start to make these triglycerides. And uh, you can treat it like the phenomenon of quiescence, which is known in animals. And many of our cells are quiescence. And if they go out quiescence uh, prematurely, it usually ends up being cancer. And so, so what we found, actually, or what Cha Hong found, is a mutant that affects this process. And that uh, basically that gene that uh, goes along with this mutant or is deficient in this mutant is related to uh, proteins that are very important for cancer research in animals and mammals and humans, for example, retinoblastoma protein. And, and one of the latest grad students in Leptomomi and Shai Hong, they basically identified uh, the interaction between this retinoblastoma protein and this protein deficient in this mutant. And that gives us a new way of um, studying um, how metabolism affects important things like cell division, and we think this is actually a very good model for studying cancer in the future, and so we're trying to push that topic a little bit more in future studies. So, um, finally, um, another topic that I'd like to develop in the future and that we began to develop is uh, synthetic biology using uh, lipid droplets as platforms to assemble pathways for the synthesis of drugs and novel compounds. And you might recognize this name down here as Björn Hamburger. So Björn Hamburger is a person we have uh, made an offer to and hopefully he's going to accept the offer and join us here in biochemistry. And he is an expert on uh, this diterpene metabolism, phoscholine, which is a drug that can be used to um, uh, interfere with uh, various uh, aspects of cellular metabolism. And it comes from, comes from a um, tree in India, and, uh, or not a tree, but a small plant. And uh, so we try to, he has the genes to, to make this compound, but in order to make it in large amounts, we would try to make it in uh, lipid droplets and basically target this pathway to lipid droplet, which is a synthetic biology approach, and then sequester this toxic compound into the lipid droplet, make it non-toxic for the cell, and then be able to isolate it in large amounts. And so, so you're thinking along the lines of developing synthetic biology approaches based on um, lipid droplets and uh, targeting proteins to lipid droplets. So those are four examples um, of what we are doing, um, give you some ideas of what we're doing in the future. And of course, none of this would have been possible without everybody, everybody in the lab. And so I went through my computer and looked for all the slides I could find uh, this is all the um, lab photos we have uh, had during the years um, at MSU, which is uh, over 15 years by now. I don't have every year covered, but I hope I have every person covered, more or less. Some, some people will find themselves twice. But um, so many of these people have gone on to become assistant professors. Um, Wayne Rikoff, one of them. Uh, others have gone to um, industry, BSF, uh, Carl Andre. Um, Alex Cernak is the guy who discovered wrinkled one, which is uh, one of the most important transcription factors, or the only one that we know controls oil biosynthesis and is used by lots of people. 
Miyashimojima is an assistant professor or associate professor now in Japan and, and so on. And, and Zhang Cheng Shu right here is a, a senior or is now getting promoted to a um, full senior um, scientist at Brookhaven National Lab and so on and so on. So there's a lot of people here that um, came from the lab and Eric Mellering here is the one who discovered SFR2 and um, he is working for synthetic genomics and has some higher level of senior uh, uh, scientist position there by now. So, and I haven't mentioned everybody by name, but um, they're all there. And I'd like to thank everybody from the lab. Lots of them are sitting right here. And um, of course, this whole thing wouldn't be possible with people involved. And um, I'm sorry I didn't mention everybody's names, but um, I know you're all doing great stuff. And hopefully, you're all going to get great jobs and will graduate soon and so forth. Thank you very much. <laughs>